Okay, for this video I'm going to show you an example of uh, putting a cannula into a patient's arm in an exam type situation. So again, first to introduce yourself, uh, seek consent for the cannula so you explain. You just need to put a small, uh, uh, a small uh, tube into the arm called a cannula. Okay, it's just a little drip that we pop into the arm that we can give medicines and fluids by. Um, takes a couple of minutes to do the procedure, it can be a bit painful sometimes, sometimes cause a little bit of bleeding as well. The risk of infection um, when the cannula is in is also a possibility, so you explain all those things. Um, moving on to it, wearing gloves obviously, first thing to do is to put the tourniquet around the patient's arm. For this, I'm going to use a vein in the anti-cubicle fossa, nice and easy to access. Um, we've got all our equipment here, including a sharp spin. We've got all our equipment here, including a sharp spin. Um, so I'm just going to clean this area now using a sterile cloth. Okay. Now you can select any one of a number of different ventricles. I'm going to use a pink, and you can see separately on the site about different sizes of ventricles and what they mean. Essentially, blue is the smallest ventricle, then pink, then green, then white then brown being the largest ventral. Um, again, you can see in Ben's arm, very nice vein coming down here, very easy to palpate when you, when you, when you do that. So again, just re-clean this site. Uh, I've got a clear idea of exactly where I'm going to go. Open the penis cannula, and it comes out like this with the two wings that need to be bent sideways, a protective plastic guard over the top. So take the protective guard off, and the easiest way to hold the cannula is with uh, the middle finger on one of the wings, index finger just around the cap, and thumb behind this, um, this uh, supporting uh, structure just here. Okay, so again, all of these things. Uh, you're just going to feel a sharp scratch in just a second. So when I'm approaching the vein, I've got the line of the vein clearly described. Okay, I'm going to just tighten the skin slightly using my ring finger and thumb finger. Again, I'm not touching anywhere near the actual insertion site. And then I'm just going to gently, once I've got the line correct, at about 30 degrees, just gently and firmly insert the cannula in. You can see there straight away, just going through the skin, the flashback into the bevel of the cannula. This stage, drop the cannula down nice and flat, and then insert it maybe a millimeter or so. Okay. At this point, both the needle and the plastic tube are in the arm and in the vein. But what I'm going to do now is just keeping the rest of the cannula stable is just withdraw the needle. You can see as I do that, the blood flashing back into the cannula. What this means now is that the plastic, um, uh, the plastic cannula is now over the top of the needle and I can then advance that plastic cannula up into the arm. Okay? And as you're doing so, you can slowly, slowly draw back on the needle. At this point, you can take the, um, the take the um, tourniquet off. So, what I'm going to ask Ben to do is just lift his arm up now for the sake of gravity and just for demonstrating. I'm just going to now remove the cap from the edge of this cannula. Okay, pop that just to one side for a second. Sometimes it's helpful just to put a small bit of gauze down just to help prevent any flow back of blood just in this area. But the next trick is to actually pop the cannula top back on the end of the cannula after you've taken the um, taken the sharp out. So I'm going to do this quite quickly. So I'm going to put a bit of pressure over the vein, stop the flashback, take the cannula needle out, and then put the cap back on nicely. Now, if you want to take blood from the ventrum, instead of putting the cap on there, you can just simply put um, a syringe on to take the blood. So as you can see, the cannula is in position quite nicely. What remains left to be do now is to put a cannula dressing over the top. And these come by lots of different names, in terms such as a Decafix, but these are very simple. This is the one that we use locally. So it comes with two strips which you place down the side of each um, of the wings of the cannula, if you like. So one strip just there, one strip just here. 
Okay, and then the rest of it just goes over the top quite nicely. And then it gets stuck down. And so and these are sterile dressings that then can be taken off nice and easily. There's also different ways to take them off and each one has a slightly different method. So I'm just going to pull that off there. And as you can see now, the cannula is in position quite nicely. Um, and the final thing that is left to be done is to flush the cannula with some saline to check it's in position. So what I need is a syringe. So the normal saline, so that's sodium chloride 0.9%, expires uh, March 2010. Take that off. Draw up a small flush. Make sure I've got all the air out of the needle. And then simply pop the flush into the arm and then you can see it's flushing with very little resistance. Can you feel anything there, Ben? A little bit, yeah. Again, patients sometimes feel a sensation of cold travelling up the arm because of the cold, um, because of the cold uh, uh, sodium chloride that goes up through the uh, through the arm. Okay, so that's the cannula inserted now. Um, you can give the patient some advice. You can see that the insertion point is quite clearly labelled, and then the procedure is finished. Thank you, Ben.